For many years, the notion of a secret shadow government has been considered nothing more than a conspiracy theory fabricated by alternative right-wing news outlets. Yet during uh, Donald J. Trump's presidential election, we witnessed Democrats, liberals, and Republicans all abandon their differences as well as their commitment to the people they represent and to the oath that they took to protect American interests in order to create a coalition against Trump because of his anti-globalist rhetoric, his talks about stopping the Trans-Pacific Partnership, uh, exiting the NAFTA agreement unless they agree to renegotiate an agreement, and stopping the importation of unvetted refugees coming from terror-prone locations. Let's keep in mind that Trump's uh, refugee ban is nothing more than an extension of a ban placed by Obama in 2011 when it was discovered that two Iraqi nationals known as Wad Ramadan Alwan and Mahanad Sharif Hamadi had entered the U.S. under Obama's refugee program and then it was later discovered that their fingerprints were traced back to improvised explosions used by Iraqi nationals and Al-Qaeda in Iraq. Now, before understanding how the shadow government in America works, we must first understand how it is structured. In America, we have four political parties consolidated into two. On the left, you have liberals who are politically in sync with Democrats. And then on the right, you have conservatives who are ideologically aligned with Republicans. The agenda of both parties is driven by committees which are made up of what we know as career politicians elite members of the Republican Party and prominent members of the Democratic Party who unite behind closed doors to create a further consolidation of power made up of a circle of influential bureaucrats which we all know as the establishment. You see the establishment doesn't work for the American people. They work for foreign interests, big banks and major corporations that donate millions to them and ensure that they sustain their seat and power with the help of course of the national mainstream media. The shadow government, also known as the Third Committee, is a circle of corporate, political, and banking elite that come together to dictate what they believe is best, not only for America, but for the rest of the world. And let's, and let's keep in mind that uh, the shadow government's power is not limited to the United States alone. In 1954, a group known as the Bilderberg Group was created. The group was made up of financial experts, business experts, academic experts, and prominent members of the mainstream media. The Bilderberg Group holds annual meetings where they exchange private information with one another and promote Atlanticism, which is one of the many working parts of globalization. The shadow government has existed in many forms, in many different pla places, and under many different purposes, but ultimately with one goal, the consolidation of power through the construction of a one world order. Remember, you can't control the world unless you first learn how to micromanage it. Let me give you a few examples of a couple of agent organizations that micromanage countries for the shadow government. The Council on Foreign Relations, who are responsible for drafting international and foreign policies. The United Nations, which is basically a unification of foreign powers under one supranationalist powers, or as I like to call it, a microcosm of the One World Order. Then you have the NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement, which was drafted to create an economical and political dependency between the United States, Mexico, and Canada in order to usher in the second phase of the plan, which is to create a consolidation of power through the now, the North American Union, in the same way that Europe was consolidated into the EU, the European Union, and Africa was consolidated into the AU, which is the African Union. Promoting international dependency on a global market has already begun. Let's keep in mind that currency is already becoming singular under the currency union. Uh, let me give you a few examples. You have the American dollar in the insular areas. You have the new shekel of Israel and Palestine. You have the pound sterling of the United Kingdoms. You have the CFA franc and the CFP franc. Then you have the East Caribbean dollar and the uh, OECS union. You have the Australian dollar and its territories. The New Zealand dollar. 
the Indian rupee, and conclusively, the euro, which is part of the, uh, the European Union. So in order to give you a full understanding of where the concept of the one world order extends from, I will be using numerology to decipher theology. And if you bear with me, you will understand the correlation between one and the other. Most people don't believe in the one world order and snub it off as just another conspiracy theory fabricated by right wing nut jobs to impede progress. First, let's talk numbers. If we were to try and take over the world, then we'd basically have to accomplish three different things. First, we'd have to take over the seven, re the seven continents. Once we take over the seven continents, we'd have to place ten leaders in these ten regions which are within these seven continents. Then once we accomplish that, we'd have to find a way of controlling what is bought and sold in these regions on a global level in order to finalize our takeover. Now to get started, I'm going to explain the correlation between theology and the one word order using numerology. So please, keep an open mind. In the Bible, the book of Revelations chapter 13, it speaks about a beast that rises out of the sea with seven heads and ten horns and on top of these ten horns, ten crowns. For many, this is a horrific vision of a demon that will rise out of nothing to control the world. And for others, this is just a delusion made up by religious fanaticism. So whether you're one or the other, I ask of you, please, bear with me with an open mind as I begin translating the metaphors within this chapter. The book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 1, says, Behold, and I stood upon the sand of the sea, and witnessed a great beast rise up out of the sea. Now, even though it appears to be something that's being witnessed, it's actually just a vision for the future. Now, in the book of Daniel, chapter 17, verse 12, it says that the beast that rises out of the sea, the sea is basically just a highly populated area going through turmoil and chaos. The beast, according to the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 17, represents a great power that will arise. The seven heads represents a division of power amongst the seven continents as translated in the book of Revelation uh, chapter 17. And the ten horns with the ten crowns represents the ten kingdoms that will be governed by ten kings in accordance to the book of Daniel chapter 7 verse 24. Still not convinced? Well, remember we spoke earlier about the one world currency that will control what you buy and sell throughout the world? Well, in Revelation 13, verse 17, it specifically says, And no one will buy or sell, lest he that have the mark of the beast, or the name of his mark, or the number of his name, which is 666. 666 is a number that's found on every product that you've ever bought. Just take a look at any of the products that you've looked at. Take a look at the code bar, and you realize that there are actually six bars separated by three bars, three times, which actually equals 666. These code bars will be part of the human microchipping program that has already begun in Britain as of March 19, 2009, and here in the United States. Now, the reason I created this video is because I've heard many people and many mediocre websites claiming that Obama is actually forming a shadow government, which is not true, partially. Obama doesn't have the power or influence to pull it off, but he is one of many agents of the shadow government which use organizations such as Obama's Organizing for Action with money from puppets like George Soros Open Door Society who funnel money to groups such as the No Border Network who go out, protest and advocate for a no border government. As usual, my fellow patriots, stay informed and may God bless. And remember, together we can make America great again, one topic at a time. Stay safe.